Good evening and welcome to our CF of Ireland Autumn 2020 Conference. Obviously our conference is not in the format we had originally planned, but we are pleased to be able to meet with you in this style tonight and to update you on the ministry our workers have been able to conduct throughout this past summer. Yes, we have faced restrictions, but yes, we have faced opportunities. Our theme for conference is God's word is not bound, and our workers have certainly proved that over these past months. We trust you will be thrilled and excited and encouraged as you hear of the ministry conducted in Ireland. This will not be an exhaustive report, but it will be honing in on certain aspects of ministry, and we sure are sure you will be encouraged. So thank you for tuning in. Thank you for praying. May you be encouraged to pray even more after you hear the reports this evening. I will now introduce to you James Martin, a member of our Board of Trustees, who is going to lead us in prayer. Thank you, James. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put your confidence in man. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put your confidence in princes. Father God, we bow before you this day and we give thanks, O oh God, for your steadfast and enduring love. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that it endures to our day and our generation. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that your love reaches right down to us in this 21st century, in, this, in these days of pandemic and and disease, O oh God, we thank you that your love endures and reaches us. And we say with the psalmist here that, Father, we want to put our trust in the Lord, for it is better to put our trust in you than to put our confidence in man. It is better to put our trust in you than to put our trust in, in rulers and princes and governments. Father God, we give thanks this day for your steadfast love and for your mercy. We pray, O oh God, that you would forgive us. Forgive us, O oh God, when we fail to put our trust in you. Over recent days and weeks, O oh God, there have been times when we have, we have failed, O oh God, to, to put our confidence in, in you, O oh God. We have looked to rulers or to governments or to what other folks have said and we have forgotten, O oh God, your word, forgotten your promises and, and forgotten, O oh God, your, your, your love reaches us. Forgive us, O oh God, we pray. We ask, O oh God, that you would just forgive us through the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father God, we give you thanks, O oh God, for our salvation. We thank you, Lord, for that moment in our experience for some of us as a young child, for some of us as teenagers, for, for some of us, O oh God, later in life. But we, we thank you for that moment, that time in our lives when we we give our hearts and our lives to you, when, when your love gripped us and when by the power of your grace, O oh God, our love gripped your love and that, Father, we were born again. And we say thank you, O oh God, for your salvation. Father God, we give you thanks this day for bringing Sam amongst us. We thank you, Lord, for the work that he's done in Ireland and for the work in, in Europe. We thank you, Lord, for the legacy that has been left. And we thank you, Lord, for how you've used him down through many decades. We pray, O oh God, that you would bless him this day as he ministers to us. May Heavenly Father, that word, O oh God, that you've led in his heart, just be be a word for each one of us this day through the power of your Holy Spirit. Father, we would pray for David and for Rosemary and for Patty and Jill. We thank you for them. We pray, O oh God, that you give them courage and strength and wisdom, O oh God, in these days. And that as they give direction to the workers and to volunteers, to those who head up the ministries, to the those who work in the shop, to those who work in the administration we just pray heavenly father that you would bless them and that they would know a rich sense of god of your grace and of your care in their their own homes and in their own lives father god we thank you for them and we pray oh god that you'd bless them richly 
in the precious name of Jesus. So thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for allowing us to meet together, even in these circumstances. We pray, O oh God, that we might know your blessing. For this we ask in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. If you think back to March, when we were facing an unknown amount of time in lockdown, I wonder what memories come to mind. For the children, it was exciting to be off school, until, of course, they realised that they still had to do their schoolwork at home. Within CEF, the beginning of lockdown brought challenges as we tried to adapt what we do to the situation we find ourselves in. One way to continue to reach and teach the children was through at-home resources. This website contains Bible-based material that the children can access themselves. Things like videos of Bible lessons and songs, devotionals and worksheets, just to name a few. One popular item was the Memory Versathon, and about 250 children signed up for this. Each week they took up the challenge to learn a new Bible verse. They were supplied with an explanation and lots of fun ideas to help them learn it at home. And so, although we were unable to meet with the children face to face, God's word went into many homes in this way. We praise God that there have been 10,000 visitors to the site since its launch. In addition to the online clubs that many of the local workers were doing, it was decided that Truth Catchers 5-Day Club would go online for the first time in the middle of June. Preparing to record these clubs brought questions like, how can we hold the attention of the children when we're teaching to a camera and can't tell if they're listening or not? How can we teach the children a memory verse when we can't repeat it with them? How can we make the club exciting so that the child will choose to keep watching, even if an adult doesn't encourage them to do so? But these queries about teaching in an online setting didn't change the fact that we were teaching God's word. And so we were looking to him, asking for his help with the preparation, asking him to bring the children online to watch the club and trusting him to use his word in the lives of precious boys and girls. We praise God that there have been one and a half thousand views of that online club. Each of the things I've mentioned are still available online for you to share with the children that you know. You can access them through the main CEF website. And for whatever ministry is now possible in your situation, if you need materials, then the usual range are available at the office in Belfast and they can be ordered online too. Hello everyone, my name is Emma Reid and I'm the CEF worker in the Mid-Ulster area. I want you to think back to February time with me. Plans were coming on really well for our Mid-Ulster camps. We had junior camp fully booked um, and we had lots booked in for inters camp. We had a full team of helpers signed up to help us with junior camp as well. Then, as you know, our plans had to drastically change. Paddy and Dill Crozier and myself met on Zoom frequently to plan our Mid-Ulster online camps because our two residential camps had now changed to Mid-Ulster camps at home. But what a great opportunity even to reach others that might not have came to camp because we now had um, an unlimited number of spaces for those who wanted to sign up for junior camp. And we had 85 eight to 11 year olds sign up for it, which was great. And many of those children had never been to a CEF camp before. And we know as well of parents and children watching along at home too. It was amazing to see such enthusiasm um, as we asked leaders to get involved and record videos for us. They recorded morning sessions, they recorded evening sessions for us. We had lots of Bible lessons recorded, missionary lessons recorded, demonstrations of crafts, challenges, people sharing their testimony, so many videos recorded. But we also had great people who helped us with all of the editing too. And we're so thankful for our volunteers who took the time and did that for us. The campers all got daily challenges and this was to help keep them engaged throughout the week. And they got points for their team as they sent back their completed challenges. 
And we had a theme week today of our camp as well. So it was great seeing photos and videos parents sent in of children doing their obstacle courses on sports day or having a picnic during our picnic day as well. A highlight for me each day of junior camp was watching those, watching those little videos and photos and seeing all that the campers were doing at home. And it was just such a blessing to see how they were participating throughout the week as well. So that was online junior camp, but what about inters camp? Well, inters camp for us was a lot different. Um, we had, yes, our pre-recorded morning sessions for the 12 to 15 year olds, but we also had live evening meetings um, on Zoom in the evenings. We had 49 young people signed up for that, and it was great seeing just how they came back each evening and they were engaged in the games, the activities, but most importantly, how they listen so well to the teaching and how they took part in the small time discussions as well. Feedback from parents was incredible. We were blown away with the feedback that we got. There were so many lovely messages and emails of how children enjoyed it, were looking forward to camp each day and how they really missed it whenever it was over. I want to share one little story with you. One parent told us how her little girl had watched the Amy Carmichael lessons with tears in her eyes. She was really challenged by them. And she was so happy, so glad that Amy was able to save so many children. But her mom also told us that she was really glad that she had brown eyes as well. Isn't that amazing? Minister camps at home were really such an encouragement, a great opportunity to reach children who might never come to a camp but watch camp online at home. We were so thankful for so much answered prayer, amazing volunteers, for technology to run the camps, for people like you who prayed for our camps, but above all for the Lord's help to run Minister camps at home. Hi from Wexford. Thank you for your prayers for us during the summer. I want to praise God for our online teen camp. Uh, we miss being together in Ocean View Camp Centre in Donegal, but one blessing of being online was that campers and leaders were able to join us from many different places. I was very thankful for the leaders that we had this year, especially as quite a few of them had grown up through our Good News Clubs and Camp. Uh, we had five leaders from Wexford, one from Dublin, two from Northern Ireland, uh, two joined us from London and one even from France. Uh, camp is not just a blessing and learning time for the campers, but it's also a time of encouragement and growth for the leaders as well. Praise God for one leader from Wexford who was working as an au pair this summer in France and she was able to join some of the evening meetings and even bring some of the young people that she was staying with along with her. This wouldn't have been possible if we hadn't been online this year. Uh, praise God for two brothers from London. Uh, they were also able to join us as leaders and they've been a great encouragement to me over many years as I've seen what God has done in their lives. Uh, I first met them when they joined one of our Good News Clubs here in Wexford when they were about five and seven years old. Uh, they were going through some challenges in their lives at that time and the younger one wasn't even able to speak because of a health problem. They faithfully attended Good News Club for many years and began coming to summer camp when they were old enough. Over the years, I've seen both of them face different trials and difficulties in, in life, and yet God has used these to make them stronger in their faith. They moved to London three or four years ago, but they've kept in touch and they would come over during the summer uh, on the ferry to help at our junior camp. And now they're in their early 20s, and it's good to see how their desire to serve God has grown. This year, they didn't have to travel to come as leaders to our camp. It was great to see them on Zoom each evening from London. They were also involved in sending uh, videos of themselves doing activities and a prayer and one of them taught an evening lesson on the Zoom. Um, at the end of the week they both texted and thanked me for the privilege of being able to be part of the camp. The older one is involved in helping in his church with the young people there and he asked could he use uh, the talks that we had done at camp uh, with his uh, teenagers in his church. Uh, praise God for the work that he started in the lives of these young men when they were boys here in Wexford and praise God he's using them where they are in London. Praise God for all the leaders that we had and just the encouragement of seeing how God has worked in their lives, many of them since they were uh, children here in the clubs. Uh, it's God's work and we give him the glory and as it says in Philippians chapter 1 verse 6, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Thank you for your prayers for us. 
Never would I have thought in all of my years of children's ministry that this was going to have to be a rule at one of our junior camps. No TNT. This year we decided to take our camp online and we came up with the idea of Minecraft Camp The Big Build. Minecraft is a very popular computer game amongst children of primary school age and no matter what device they play on, whether it be an iPad, an iPhone or a console or a PC, they can all join together into the one realm and therefore the idea of Minecraft Camp, it was born. Minecraft Camp had ran from Monday through Friday, from 1 o'clock through until 5 o'clock. Each day would have began with a daily build challenge. The children would have been given some kind of idea, some kind of hint and shown some examples of things that they could build to tie in with that particular theme. Whether the theme was housing or farming or industry and the children in the realm could use their own imagination, their creativity and inventiveness to build whatever they pleased in their realm to the best of their abilities. This meant that we had some amazing wonderful build challenges which were made throughout that particular week as the children showcased their skills and their abilities on this particular game. But Minecraft Camp really meant that we were able to take the gospel into the homes of many boys and girls all across our county. Children, as well as their parents, were able to sit and listen to the lessons from the book of Ruth. There they would have heard about the Lord Jesus Christ being their Redeemer, the one who loved them and who came to save them, and to bring them into the family of God. They heard wonderful truths about making wise choices and wise decisions that would be useful for them now as well as into the future. Not only did the children receive this level of teaching but they also were able to interact and communicate with each other and with their leaders on Zoom. We used Zoom as a way of communication so we could chat together and talk over the lessons that we had learned and the things that they had been taught. It was a way and a means that a quiz could be conducted and that a memory verse could be learned. It was wonderful in the middle of a lockdown when ordinary camp couldn't take place, that technology came into its own. In this technological age, it was wonderful that we could use those uh, things that are at our disposal and we could use that to bring the gospel to many boys and girls. The children and the parents expressed their enjoyment at Minecraft camp, so much so that they have requested that it be ran again. Wonderful opportunities to bring children together in a virtual world, a safe environment, to play together, to create together, to build together, but yet no tidying up like there is with Lego. And how we can use this means to bring the gospel to boys and girls across our county. In the Moorn area, our Enters Camp is always a very important week of our summer. We really enjoy the week spent with the young people in spite of the sleepless nights that that often brings. So this year we were very disappointed when Enters Camp had to be cancelled. Initially it seemed that the best we could do would be an online camp. But as the summer progressed and restrictions eased slightly, it became possible for larger organised groups to meet outdoors. And that gave us the idea of Enters Day Camps. We divided our group of young people into two groups. And we were able to bring each group together for two days of day camp. We used the football pitch in Annaldown as our venue uh, with a large marquee in the background just in case the weather wasn't so good. We had one group come on Monday and Tuesday, another group come on Wednesday and Thursday. We had a full programme of games and activities for them as well as our Bible teaching times. Philip and Denise Allen were our Bible teachers. Uh, they taught from the life of Peter each day. There were so many up-to-date relevant lessons for the young people. Other leaders shared as well. In each of our sessions, we had a, a lesson from lockdown uh, when one of the leaders shared something that the Lord had been teaching them uh, over the months of lockdown. Young people really, really appreciated it so, so much. For many of them, they had had a lot of things cancelled earlier in the summer. A lot of camps or other events that they might have attended had not been able to happen and so they had missed out on the fun and fellowship with their friends as well as missing out on uh, Christian teaching uh, for many of them as well. 
parents as well were so so appreciative of all that was done and for us as leaders it was just great to be able to spend time with the young people over those days it wasn't always easy the weather was not great storm ellen even paid us a visit midweek meaning that we had to take down our marquee but we survived and we were so glad that we had been able to give those young people those days of enters day camp those young people play a very important part in our area many of them we trust in future will be used by the lord to reach out to boys and girls across the Mourne area we really want to invest in them and so we were so glad this summer that enters day camps were a possibility to give us the chance to speak to them and to share God's word with them. Hi, my name is Tanya and I work with my husband Stephen in Dublin. And normally every summer we would have Sea a Week and the young people would come together and they would then go out into housing estates to do five day clubs to reach the children and to share with them the good news of the gospel. But this summer we knew that that would not be possible and the young people still wanted to do something. We still wanted to see the children that we would normally see. And so we decided to put together a little pack. Inside this bag, we put the five day club booklet that we would normally give to the children at the end of Sea Week. And inside this booklet, there are the stories that they would hear at the clubs that week. We also put in a pencil, rubber, a bookmarker, a tract, a toy, a little pack of sweets, and we also put in an invitation to the children to watch the online five day club on the CEF YouTube channel. We also put in a little invitation for them to watch the stories that are inside the five day club booklet on the CEF Dublin YouTube channel. And there they would see some familiar faces that they would normally see from the clubs. And we are so thankful to God that he answered prayer, that he went before us. And we were able to give out 650 packs to the children that we met over 19 different housing estates. And it was so good just to be able to see the children. Some of the children said to us, we have been waiting for you to come. And we haven't seen some of these children since last summer. And yet they were expecting us to come back. And as we went around the housing estates chatting to the parents and to the families, we realised just how important this five day club ministry is, This the impact that it has on a housing estate. We praise God for the opportunities to talk to different people when we went out with the packs. And we were able to chat to one family who had been in homeless accommodation for three years. They were just moving into a new home and they had two children and we were able to give them a little pack for their children. But they were really interested in the pack, they were really interested to know more about Christianity and they were asking about local churches that they could go to where they could find out more about God. And we just praise God for the hunger that these people had for him, the hunger that they had to know more of him and to know the truth, the truth that could set them free. We praise God as well that we were able to talk to another parent. He had three children, a person who had been through a rehab program, he had been a drug addict, but he was far away from God. He had become a Christian, but through circumstances, he didn't go to church anymore. Um, and he just wasn't walking with God. And we praise God that we had the opportunity just to talk to him, um, to talk to him about the things of God, to tell him that God loves him, that God is, is searching after him. We were just able to pray with him there in the street. And we just praise God for those opportunities. And we're so thankful that when we go out with God's word onto the streets, uh, that his word is powerful, that it is alive, um, that it is able to convict, and um, that it is able to, to bring life, to bring eternal life to people. God's word is the truth, and the truth of God's word will set people free. Hello, I'm Jonathan Graham. I'm the local worker in County Fermanagh, and it's lovely to be able to join you today to share of of socially distanced five day clubs in many a way going back to basics we never thought this summer that we were going to be able to do any face-to-face -face direct ministry but as the regulations changed towards the end of july the the lord laid on our heart to go uh, and to do two five day clubs in, in two churches that, that we normally would have done holiday bible clubs in so we got our big tarpaulin mat out we marked it all out so that the boys and girls would be socially distanced 
We prayed that the Lord would bless us that week and there was still that fear and trepidation. Would mums and dads send their, their children? Would the children want to come in the days that we find ourselves? So as the day approached, we arrived. We had our sanitizers out of questionnaires and the Lord blessed and the Lord brought along the boys and girls. It was a real joy and a real privilege for the team. I'm so thankful to God for the team that he put together. It was wonderful to share that fellowship um, again as we serve the Lord. And it was wonderful and we're so thankful to God for the wonderful week that we had weather-wise. It's not too often we can say that from Monday to Friday we had wall-to-wall sunshine. It was a real blessing and we're thankful to the Lord for that. But it was a real joy and a privilege to be able to teach the Word of God through the the Bible lessons, through the, the memory verses, through the quiz uh, and every opportunity we had, even just the conversations with the boys and girls, the conversations with mums and dads as they were dropping the, the children off and picking them up again. It was just an absolutely blessed week from start to finish. We want to thank God for the opportunity. We want to thank the, the churches for allowing us to come along and the encouragement that they were to us. But please do pray that as the word of God went forth that week, that God would speak into the hearts and lives of, of the boys and girls that were there. I want to encourage you today. God is still working and there is still opportunities. And we just thank him for the opportunities that availed us here in Fermanagh. And we pray that that's replicated right across the country in these days. That as we, we stand and take every opportunity, whether it be the ones and twos or the, the tens or twelves or whatever number the Lord should bless us with, that we will take every opportunity of sharing the good news of the gospel to boys and girls right across our, our county and, and many other counties around. Please do pray with us that God will bless and, and that God will continue to speak on into hearts and minds of the boys and girls that we were able to reach that week through our socially distanced five-day clubs. Thank you. In the education department, we're about training others to reach and teach children the Word of God. One of the ways we do this is through teaching children effectively courses. Level 1 concentrates on evangelism, teaching the gospel to children, while Level 2 focuses on teaching the Christian child. Back in January, three TCE1 courses commenced in County Armagh, County Cavan and North West Ulster. Things were going great until the 17th of March when lockdown hit and all direct ministry had to stop. But the courses weren't finished. In two of the courses, the students still had their Bible lesson practical to do and one final class. While in the other course, there were seven classes still to be taught along with the Bible lesson practical. And so very quickly, teachers and I had to adapt things and move to teaching classes online. And the students had to adapt to listening and taking part online. But with the Lord's help, we were able to complete all three of the courses. Brilliant. We organised our first online TCE2 course and, and eight students signed up. It was a learning curve for us, seeing what worked and what didn't work when teaching online. There are challenges with having online courses. You're dependent on technology, and so you're hoping that everything works and for good internet connection so the students can hear us and interact with us. We still have tea break, only the students go and make their own tea and get their own biscuits and then come back and, and chat with us. We're trying to build relationships. Yes, there's not the same opportunity to get alongside a student and, and chat to them one to one. And it's not easy for the students to get to know each other as it is when classes are face to face. And there are some things that you can do when teaching face to face that, that just don't work online, but we're learning. I have to be honest, I much prefer teaching face to face, but online means that training can still continue. And think of the potential of, of more online co courses here in Ireland. Students can be with us from the comfort of their own home, they don't have to travel and that saves a lot of time for already very busy people. We're hoping to have a national TC1 course sometime in 2021. Think of the vacant counties of Ireland. We could have students from north, south, east and west of the island learning together in their own homes. That could lead to more volunteers, maybe even more full-time workers and more boys and girls being reached with the gospel. At present, we have two online courses, a TC1 in West Tyrone 
on Monday evenings and a TCE2 in, in Dublin on Saturday mornings. Will you pray for these courses as they continue right through to the beginning of December? Will you pray that the technology will work and that these courses will be a real blessing to the students and to the children that they will teach? Will you pray for more volunteers and for more full-time workers as a result of TCE courses in the future, whether they're online or in face-to-face? Thank you. Hi, it's really good to have you with us at our autumn conference. Um, we want to give you a bit of a CV update, but rather than me or somebody else giving you a, a few facts and figures and talking to you about it, we thought we'd better show you a little bit about what's been happening over the past few months. So come with us, we're going to give you a tour of some of the parts of Seaview that have been already built. Let's come in through the front door. So as we walk through here, it might be cleared a little bit by the time we're in. We, we come into our entrance lobby. As you can see, lovely spacious glass windows, eventually. Um, lovely sofas will all be around here that you can sit down and relax. You'll be signing in for camp or other people will be signing in for you. And then as we walk through this direction, we can find a different reception for coming in. But in through here, we have our main meeting room. So come on with me and we'll see what it's like. As you can see, there's quite a bit of space in the main meeting room different to what we had before. Audio visual projectors or screens will be on the walls up at the far end and all your seating will all be around here. So it'll be done state of the art, all set up for your meetings and it'll be absolutely superb. Let's go back out this way when we're going down this direction. You can see you have to come quick. Down through this way we come right down to the other important part of camp which is of course our dining room. As we come into our dining room, you can see it's a lot bigger than what it has been. So previously we had a smaller room, but it goes the whole way down there. And of course, this is where we will have the wonderful Rosemary and Kim standing, serving us delicious food continually. And in here, if you actually come, this is where they'll be making it. And this is where many of you will be. Right about here, washing dishes, okay? That's where you'll be, washing dishes on this side. And in round this part is where all the food will be made. And then with lots of storage space over to the far side, if you can come with me. I'm sorry I'm making you go quickly. We have lots of dry storage. We'll have our freezers. We'll have offices down here for the kitchen staff and for managing the, se the centre. Back out through this way, out through all the, the tables and chairs that we have. Can you imagine how beautiful it'll be actually when the sun's shining in Kilkeel? How wonderful looking through those windows and the entrance lobby. Back out this direction on this whirlwind tour. And in the main entrance lobby, there's another door, an access way down here. And we'll have a number of individual toilets, okay? And a storage room. And when we come to the bottom here, we'll have our elevator, our lift shaft. And then we'll also have our stairwell, which will go right up to the top. You need to give me a couple of seconds just to get up to the next floor, okay? So, that was tiring getting up those stairs. Okay, we're now on the first floor. Um, so this is gonna be where your main dorm block's gonna be. And it's gonna be separated into two sections, one section of, block of dorms and then another section. Okay, so as we're coming along this corridor, the first thing on our right is the, the bathrooms. We're going to take you into the first set of bathrooms. And as you can see, there are lots and lots of shower cubicles that are here, which is great because that's the one thing we really, really needed a big improvement at camp. So it's amazing the amount of shard space we have. Bathrooms, toilets, and then there'll be a huge block of sinks will be all along here. And then um, a bathroom for disability access. Okay, going to need to turn around again, so I am. So if I go back out this direction, out through the bathroom block, and then we go over into the dorms. Now, the dorm is not as big as you're gonna see it, okay? Um, this is gonna be a block of dorms. So for you to imagine, this is one wall which will be coming along here, okay? And this will be dorm one, or whatever number it is, okay? <clears throat> this will be another set of dorms. And you can see, there's gonna be a number of them going along. Each of these dorms will be a roughly like what we had in rooms one, two, and three in the original. Almost exactly the same size and layout that they'll be involved in that. So lots of space, lots of views going out across the moorings and really, really beautiful. So you can see, we've still a bit of work to do in all of this. As we're developing and going along, 
you'll see here it's really hard to tell in fact what would be best to do is come back out into the, the walkway we're walking along here we've got a leaders room that's going to be on our side here this is going to be where the big stairwell will come up on the elevator will come up here this is where i climbed earlier right so let's go we're going along here and then in to a lounge area so once we walk in through this door we've got a huge big lounge area which would be for you to relax and to enjoy so it'll be soft seating for you to go in here and relax and look out over the lovely moorings and things that are going on across there now this is the first floor there's going to be another floor which is going to be up above if you can look up it's still to be done we've got a number of the slabs that are there the rest of the slabs hopefully within the next two weeks will be done and there's a little bit i think that that's all the steel work that's going to be up maybe one more bit of loose steel is going up and then the roof will be done okay so we've showed you the first block of bathrooms the first block of dorms then we have our divider which is the lounge area and then we come to our next block of dorms which obviously haven't been built yet as you can see it's a similar layout on the right hand side we have our disability access bathroom we have our other bathrooms and shower units that are all going to be in here another set of them down below and on the left hand side we will have our different dorms listed and divided three okay so similar idea as we come further down this line if you can imagine in the old sea view going past dorms one two and three what we find here is a leader storm that's in this area sorry it's very dark in here a leader storm and bathroom that's in here and then we have our access into the main sports hall which will be connected up at this point in time so in there you have your craft room so this is what we have at the moment if you can come out here you can see the beauty of some of these dorms now we've got a really good day at the moment but if you can look even outside past the scaffolding you can see how beautiful it is um, and it'll be class just to see and imagine lots and lots of young people lots and lots of children here hearing god's word and just being able to have time together it'll be class to see it all finish let's go downstairs and just have one quick look outside to see the dimensions outside of what's going on so as you can see this is the, the the entrance lobby that we had earlier on which is all glass cuts in and you have your main meeting room that's here above your head here you see a, a, a steel framework this is going to be a canopy which is going to shelter just in case there's the odd time it might rain it doesn't happen in Kilkeel a lot but it might rain in the summer so this will cover you the whole way across here and then we can see where the window in the sports hall is that's going to be the new entrance into the sports hall so this canopy will continue over and will shelter all of that but the post is put back so it still gives you enough room for grass and for actually going out and playing all your games and stuff so you can see it's a really great purpose-built um, center well hopefully that has made see you come alive for you a little bit more and you can see the progress that's coming it's great to see actually buildings being built at this point in time it's great to see actually the work that's being done um, and how quickly the guys are working on it now things have slowed obviously there's been a very very different situation we've been in the past six months and um, so work has been held back and that'll probably affect the end date as well we still want to have it for next summer it's going to be very tight maybe unlikely but we're pushing and we're aiming towards that well how can you be involved well number one will you pray pray for speed on site pray for quick delivery of everything pray for the workmen who are working on site and pray that they will know god's blessing pray that god will really use this place in a mighty way pray also for the finance we've been so grateful for how faithful god has been one million five hundred and fifty seven thousand pounds has come in it's incredible the, the amount that's come in and we need approximately about five hundred thousand more that's working down about sixty two and a half thousand every month now at the moment there's about twenty six thousand coming in each month of the past three months pray that more will come in pray for more opportunities to share the good news about seaview pray that we'll be able to get out we haven't been able to get to churches as much we haven't been able to talk to as many people pray for opportunities and maybe you can help us in that maybe you can help us with this we'll have a short little video which can go out to churches maybe you can get that shown in your church maybe one of us could come and share would you take the opportunity um, to to try and encourage others to try and share about the goodness of god to try and share about what we're doing here about more importantly what god's doing but most importantly pray for this building pray that it will honor god it will glorify him and that many many children will come to know him through this
trust that you've been encouraged by the reports you have just heard this evening. We are very thankful to God for all that he has enabled our workers to do over these last number of months. And as we look towards the autumn and winter period, we would value your prayers for many decisions that need to be made. Pray especially for our workers, for volunteers and for the committees as they discuss and plan for what ministry will look like in the coming months. 
many are setting plans in place already. Good news clubs, we hope, will take place in some kind of format. Either live, if there's small numbers, and maybe buildings are large enough. Possibly pre-recorded or live on Zoom. We do know that one area is planning a doorstep Good News Club, which is a combination of both pre-recorded and live activities on the doorstep of the children's houses. Another area is planning on putting packs together for the Good News Club children, which will include a lesson, a quiz and a craft idea. Many of our workers hope to have opportunities to conduct school ministry in different formats from usual. Some will have opportunity to meet face to face with classes in small groups and do assemblies in smaller groups. Some will do virtual assemblies where they pre-record and send these into the schools to play, again usually in class groups. Two of our workers are going to come now just to share some of the plans that they have for ministry in the months ahead. Hello. Hi. We're Simon and Hannah Snodgrass. We are missionary delegates for Scotland. But for the past year, we've had the privilege of training and working alongside Jennifer McNeil in the northwest Ulster area of CF Ireland. And of course, like all the other CF workers, when mid-March came and COVID-19 and lockdown, we had to come up with new ways that we could reach the children in our area. And one of the new ways that we found most effective in doing that was through online ministry. Taking everything that we did in person and moving it online. And we had the great joy of being able to do that uh, this past summer through our two camps moving online. And with online camp, we learned a lot of new things about editing and how to present material and interact with them. But overall, it was just so encouraging to see how God used that. And that was across the board with CF Ireland's and summer ministries going online. Uh, so one of the things that we're really excited about for this autumn is putting schools ministry online. Um, normally at this time, we would be going in with Jennifer into the local schools and helping her out with the assemblies and good news clubs um, and working alongside her in that. But obviously for the foreseeable future, that's not possible. So what we've done instead is created a YouTube channel where we'll be uploading different videos um, every single week uh, and they'll have a full Good News Club program for a lot of them with a lesson, memory verse, song, and a lot of them will have an activity along its side as well. But it's split up so that they can go and watch whatever they want to, um, whether it's just the lesson or the memory verse according to time. But the brilliant thing about it being on YouTube as well is that kids and families can access these as well locally. Um, so we're just really excited to see how God will use that. It'll be different lesson series. Um, there's one about Lazarus and Feeding the 5,000 and others that CF have made. But the one we started out with is a lesson on Johannes Kepler. We wouldn't be CF workers if we didn't have a visual aid. Um, who was a scientist who lived hundreds of years ago, um, but God used it in an amazing way, even though he never had an easy life. And the core message to it is to trust God. He's in control. And we really hope that that's an encouragement to kids um, with everything that's going on uh, right now and are excited to see how God uses this and the other lessons going forward um, as we continue to learn in online ministry. Yeah, and I know a big prayer request, not just for ourselves, but for all the CF workers, is just for wisdom. Um, as I said, this is a new step for many of us. Uh, we have had to learn new skills, and obviously now we're spending a lot of time in front of uh, a computer screen, and so there's technology involved. So would you pray for wisdom and pray that all those things would work, and that as this material goes out online, uh, through YouTube and through different means, um, that the children would uh, see and hear the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ and that they would still be being reached in a fun and interactive way. So um, that's our big prayer uh, going ahead in the months ahead and we would ask that you would pray alongside us with that. But thank you so much and we'll see you. Bye. Bye. Autumn Conference. Take 10. Well, not quite 10, you'll be glad to know. Not yet, anyhow. Do you know, if you had told me six months ago that the majority of my ministry would involve video recordings, I would have cringed at the very thought of it. However, 
Coronavirus brought many changes into our lives at home, in the workplace, in how we worship and also to ministry. And at the beginning of lockdown, I determined to keep this one fact before me. None of this had taken the Lord by surprise. None of this was unexpected for him. God was completely in control, both in everyday life and also in regards to my ministry here in Belfast. And so myself and the other Good News Club teachers began to correspond with the boys and girls, sending out material to encourage them, booklets for them to read, and also contacting parents by phone and by text. And during this time, I received a phone call from a school. And the school asked if I would be willing to put together a little hello for the children to remind them that everyone was still here and that we were missing them, just to reassure them. And of course I agreed. However, I did have a condition that they would allow me to mention God as well. And they spoke with the principal and that was okay. And so I put together a little talk about being thankful. And one of the things I did at the end was I told them that the Bible talks about being thankful too. But God's word says, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. It was wonderful to remind hundreds of children that God is a good God, that God loves them, that God loves them so much that he sent them his son, the Lord Jesus, to be their saviour. And so online ministry began for many workers, online camp, online clubs, online lessons. And then we found ourselves here at the beginning of the autumn winter work. What now? Normally the diary would be filled up with bookings. Do you know, during the summer, another two schools had got in touch and they had asked me to consider preparing assemblies. And I just thought, this is such a good opportunity. I can't say no. God has proven that his word is not bound. And so I said, yes, yes, I'd love to do that. And I offered it to other schools that I'm involved in as well. Do you know, all of them were really eager. And so that's the stage I'm at, preparing assembly talks to be shown in schools. As a single worker, sometimes you would love to duplicate yourself so you could be in several places at the one time. Well, here's my opportunity and I have to grasp it so that these children can continue to learn about the goodness of God. And I know many other workers are in the same position as myself, preparing assembly talks and also looking the opportunities to teach RE lessons as well through an online video. So please do pray for us. Pray for us as we continue to reach the boys and girls, not just here in Belfast, but throughout our land. That as the psalmist says, they might set their hope in God. Thank you. Good evening. It's good to have our brother Sam Duckley along to speak for us this evening. Sam and his wife Sadie are no strangers to CEF of Ireland, or indeed CEF globally. They're among the best known and longest serving workers within CEF. Sam and Sadie, some 70 years ago, established the work of CEF of Ireland, and indeed became national directors for the next 14 years. Then moving to Kiltzimmer in Switzerland, they became European Regional Directors for CEF for the next 29 years. Now then, having retired, and I spell retire here with a Y and not an I, Sam and Sadie founded and led the work of CEF Specialised Book Ministry for the next 14 years. Now for the last 13 years, they've been working part-time with CEF Specialised Book Ministry. So as we look forward to hearing God's word, word through Sam this evening, we thank God for Sam's consistency and passion over this past 70 years, not simply in reaching boys and girls for Christ, but also in developing leaders for the work of God and in writing very practical books, spiritual books that not only encourage and develop leaders and believers in the work of God, but instruct us how to deal with difficult situations in a godly manner. We thank God for Sam and Sadie's service thus far and pray that God would continue to bless them. Let's commit them to the Lord in prayer and ask the Lord to bless his word through Sam to us this evening. Let's pray. Our gracious God and eternal heavenly Father, we thank you this evening that we come not in the name of an organization, for Lord, we acknowledge the blessing that you have bestowed on us and through the work of Child Evangelism Fellowship. 
But Lord, we come in the name of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. And we acknowledge that CEF is not our work, but it's your work. And it's got to be done your way. And we thank you for the blessing of reaching boys and girls for Christ all over the world. For we acknowledge that it was the Lord Jesus Christ who died and has risen again. As he who is seated at your right hand, ever living to intercede for us. But Lord, we thank you tonight for that precious blood that he shed that avails for sin once for all forever. And we thank you that it was he who said, suffer the little children to come unto me for of such is the kingdom of God. And Father, we thank you for the passion and the desire that you've given Sam and Siri to reach boys and girls for Christ, to develop leaders in the work and also to provide materials that help us grow spiritually and to live right before you. And so Father, as we thank you for their service and we just pray your blessing on them we pray particularly tonight for the blessing on sam as he would bring your word tonight grant lord that he might speak as thus and thus saith the lord and that as we hear your word that we might know that god the lord has spoken to us tonight through your servant so bless and undertake and glorify your name for jesus sake we ask it amen Hello, greetings from me, from Sam Doherty, to all you dear folks in CEF, Irish Child Evangelism Fellowship. It's a privilege for me now to be able to speak to you on this occasion, although it's a rather unfortunate circumstance that makes occasions like this necessary. But I'm pleased to have this opportunity to speak to you and perhaps at this time to maybe get back what I would say to basics, some of the basics of our work, the foundation of our work. I want to read just to start off with just two verses from Acts chapter 26. Therefore, King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision, but declared first to those in Damascus and in Jerusalem and throughout all the region of Judea, and then to the Gentiles, that they should repent, turn to God, and do works suitable to repentance. Having therefore obtained help from God, I continue to this day. Paul was obedient to the heavenly vision. For over 70 years now, Child Evangelism Fellowship have been operating here in Ireland and there's no doubt about it whatsoever that the work has been greatly blessed by God during these years. Why? What's the reason for this blessing? Why has the work grown so much? There are a number of possible reasons. But my own personal conviction is that one of the main reasons, if not the main reason, is because Child Evangelism Fellowship in Ireland have been obedient to the heavenly vision. And it's that basic question, that basic theme of the vision that we're speaking about today. I remember dear David McQuilkin, who took over for me as leader of the work here and with whom I had close fellowship for many, many years. I remember David as he got towards the end of his time here on earth. He used to say to us and say to everybody in CEF, his main theme in those closing moments of his life was, don't lose the vision. Don't lose the vision. And we ask ourselves the question, what is vision? Vision is what we see. But we don't see vision today with our eyes so much. In the Old Testament, they did. But here we have the Word of God. And through the Word of God, we see with our hearts. We see with our understanding. And God wants us to see and to understand, God wants us to have vision. Personally, in the ministry of the work, God wants us to have vision. God has a fourfold vision for us. One, two, three, four. First of all, God wants us to have a vision of himself. That's where it starts. The young prophet Isaiah, before he began his ministry, before he went out into the ministry, which was to last many fruitful years, we read in Isaiah chapter 6, I saw the Lord high and lifted up, 
seated upon the throne, and his train filled the temple. He started his ministry with a vision of God. He saw God, and especially he saw God and his sovereignty. He saw that the God he was serving, the God he was going to serve, was a God who was sitting upon the throne, the throne of the heavens and the earth. And dear friends, dear CEF friends, dear CEF workers, the first step in our ministry is to see God. Our first step is to understand what God is like. And especially the main truth, as I have found in the Word of God, the main truth about God in His Word, portrayed in His Word, is that He is sovereign. He's an absolute and complete control. Now, when you know that, and when you believe that, and when you see that, it makes a whole difference. Because it means that every circumstance in life, pleasant, unpleasant, every circumstance in life has got one of two explanations. Either God sent it, or God allowed it. There's no third possibility. Just those two. Why? Because God's in control. He either sends or allows everything that come to us. Now, when we see that, what a difference it makes in our lives. Instead of moaning and complaining, this is something that God has allowed to happen. Something in our ministry, it has, God has a lesson to teach us. Because not only is God sovereign, He's wise. He knows what He's doing. And in His sovereignty, He does everything according to His plan. Charles Spurgeon used to say, he says, the day when I first understood the sovereignty of God was the day when a boy became a man. And he rejoiced in this great truth, as we all do. I remember when I was a, a, a CEF worker for years as a CEF worker, I believed in the sovereignty of God. I believed it in a theoretical, b b limited point of view. But I had an ex experience with God a number of years ago through circumstances when I came to see for the very first time in my life that God was absolutely sovereign, absolutely in control. And to be quite honest, dear friends, that made the whole difference in my life and in my ministry. The vision that God has, a vision of himself and his sovereignty. If you have that vision, don't lose it. If you haven't got that vision, ask God to give it to you. Secondly, God's second fold vision is a vision to us in CEF, a vision of the children. He wants us to see the children as he sees them. He wants us to show us what children are like from the Word of God. And the one key word that God wants us to see in that vision is that children are lost. Children are outside the kingdom of heaven. This runs contrary to the teaching of many who believe that all children are in the kingdom of heaven, all children are good, all children are innocent, all children... God wants us to see that children, when they get to the age of accountability, are lost, are condemned, and as they die like that, they're lost forever. That's a vision that God wants us to see. And that's the motive, that's the stimulus for our evangelism. Why, why do we evangelize children? Because they're lost. They need the gospel. They need to be saved. If, if they're born outside the kingdom of heaven, they come inside the kingdom of heaven when they trust Jesus Christ as their Savior, and they do that through our evangelism and bringing the gospel to them. Oh, that don't lose the vision, dear friends, don't lose the vision of the needs of the children, because our work is based upon those needs, and we want to reach those children, we want to see those children come to Christ, so don't lose that vision, hold it, hold it with all your heart. God wants us to have a vision of himself, God wants us to have a vision of the children. And then when we look at the children and we look at the multitudes of children around us who are lost, who need the gospel, who need to be saved, we ask ourselves the question, what can I do? How can a, a, a one person, simple person like me, do something to reach children who really don't have any understanding of what we want them to lear, learn? And, what? and here is the answer. God wants us to have a vision, thirdly, of the gospel and his power. You see, a vision of himself and his sovereignty comes first. A vision of the children and their need 
from second, a vision of the gospel and its power. Because there's power in the gospel. The gospel is the power unto salvation. And God has called us right from the very start. In child evangelism fellowship, he has called us not to entertain the children, not to educate the children, but to evangelize them. Children need to be evangelized. Children need the gospel. And it's, it's, it's a mystery. It's always a mystery to me how a, a, a number of words can be used to change people's lives, to change children's lives. It's just words. But they're special words because of the words of God. It's, it's the gospel. And children need the gospel. And we can go to boys and girls with just a simple message. We don't have to be all that gifted. We can go with our little wordless book with our Bible open. We can go and we present the gospel. And boys and girls trust the Lord Jesus. And later on, we see them grow up and to become men of God, all because we presented the gospel to them. Dear friends, don't lose your vision of the gospel. Don't stray into entertainment pathways. Don't look for other substitutes. Keep to the word of God. Keep to the gospel, because God will use your message of the gospel to speak to the hearts of boys and girls. Paul was obedient to the heavenly vision. God wants us as individuals to be obedient to his vision, to see him as he really is, the sovereign God, to see the need of the children, and to see how the gospel can be used, presented to the children, and used to lead them to the Lord Jesus Christ. But we don't finish there. There's a fourth full vision. There's a fourth vision. God wants us to see ourselves and our responsibility. Because actually this was what happened to Paul in that Damascus Road incident that we read about there. God spoke to Paul. And God sp spoke to Paul and he, and he said to him, he said, I'm going to send you to the Gentiles that they should repent and turn to God. This was, Paul, this was God's vision for Paul. To go to someone he was not interested in, didn't like, go to them with the gospel. It wasn't what Paul would have chosen but it was what God showed him to do. God has a vision for you, a vision of your responsibility to go somewhere, to do something. What is your vision? Do you know your vision? Have you asked God? I remember when I was first, first converted way back in my early days as a school teacher. I was a rugby player. I played for Estonians in the, in the upper league and I'd got my Ulster cap as a schoolboy and so on. I was a rugby player. I saw myself as a muscular young man and I was saved through the vision, the ministry of Fred Orr. I trusted Christ as my saviour. And the first question I started to ask was to ask God, what, is your, what do you want me to do? What is your vision? And I could see myself evangelizing rugby players. I could see myself athletic with athletic conversion. And God, in his wisdom and vision, gave me a vision for children. It was the last thing I would have chosen. But I'm so glad, after 70 years, I'm so glad that God chose me to reach boys and girls with the gospel. That was his vision for me. What is God's vision for you? Do you see his vision? Are you obedient to his vision? And the wonderful thing is that when you see God's vision, when you're obedient to God's vision, when problems come, you stick to your vision. You don't give up. Is there anyone here listening now at this moment who was maybe discouraged and feeling time to give up? I'm not going to keep going any more th further. I'm disappointed. I have had that experience. I remember sitting at my desk one day uh, and I was so disappointed about the way things had gone. And I was sitting and the clouds had come over. It was a, it, it, the sun had disappeared and the clouds had gone over in my life. And I thought to myself, I, I couldn't, I can't go on. And then God reminded me, this was my vision. I called you. I want you to do it. And immediately the clouds disappeared, the sun came out, and I went ahead with my business. God has vision for every one of us, a fourfold vision. He wants us to see him and his sovereignty. He wants us to see the children and their need. He wants us to see the gospel and its power and appreciate it and preach it and use it. And he wants us 
to see our responsibility. He depends upon us to do His work. He asks us to go. He opens our eyes. He shows us where to go. And we say, yes, Lord. And could I say, even as we've been dealing with our own personal selves, has God given me a vision of Himself? I don't want to lose it. Has God given me a vision of the children? I don't want to lose it. Has God given me a vision of the gospel? I don't want to lose it. Of my responsibility? I don't want to lose it. But this is true of the mission of Child Evangelism Fellowship. And as David would have said to the mission in all those days, years ago, he says to CEF, I say to CEF, us and CEF, as a mission, God has given us vision for the boys and girls of Ireland, for the boys and girls all around the world. We mustn't lose it. We mustn't depart into anything else, but keep our eyes upon what God has said and ask him to help us to accomplish his purposes and to reach boys and girls with the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's so nice to have this opportunity to speak to you uh, today, and we do trust that this conference, different as it is, will be one that is greatly used of God, and above all, that God will bring us back to the basics, back to the vision. Do we have the vision? Are we keeping it? Are we obedient to it? Or we're not going to lose it? Let's keep going. And may God use us in Child Advances and Fellowship of Ireland, not only to reach boys and girls, here in the north, down in the south, over Europe, all over the world. May God use us to reach many boys and girls with the gospel of Jesus Christ and have a vision of seeing those children come to him and trust the Lord Jesus as their Savior. Thank you very much. And from my heart to yours, may God bless you and your ministry in a very, very special way. Amen. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you and we rejoice at what our ears have heard this evening we thank you that your word is not bound and that many boys and girls and adults have had the privilege of hearing your word through the various means used as our workers have outlined tonight and we thank you that your word will always achieve the purpose for which it has been sent and we pray that it will do that in the lives of many who have heard it and we thank you for the challenge of your word this evening. Heavenly Father, give us a fresh vision of yourself, your power, your glory. And as we look around us, give us a fresh vision of children created in your image, yet going on the road away from you and heading to a crisis eternity. Oh, Heavenly Father, move our hearts to pray and to reach out to them. We thank you for the gospel. Help us never to lose the vision of what you did for us. May it fill our hearts with joy. And may it motivate us, dear God, to reach out to the next generation of children. So thank you for being with us this evening. In Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>